morning, everyone. My name is Cassie Hopkins, and I coordinate the webinars for Hausman Johnson Insurance. I would like to welcome you to today's webinar, Making Benefits a Benefit Again by Alyssa Martin. Today's webinar will run for the full hour. If there is time after the presentation, we will have a question and answer session. If you have a question during the webinar, feel free to type it into the question feature, and Alyssa will address it. After the webinar is over, there will be a short survey we are hoping you can fill out for us to give us feedback on the webinar and webinar topics you are interested in learning more about. This webinar will be recorded and will be available on the webinar archive section of our website. Each attendee will receive a follow-up email with a link to the recording and the presentation slides. This webinar is certified for HRCI and SHRM Continuing Education Credits, which we will show at the end of the webinar. I would now like to introduce you to our presenter for today's webinar, Alyssa Martin. Alyssa joined Hausman Johnson Insurance in 2017 as a benefits consultant. She has a family history of insurance, which inspired her to pursue the industry. Throughout her career, Alyssa has had the opportunity to work in many different capacities within the insurance industry. She was an outside sales executive with Humana, a senior sales executive with Emeritus, and an account manager with the McKinney's Group. In these roles, Alyssa recognized that it's all about helping clients and ensuring they're getting the most out of their benefits. It's her responsibility to ensure both the employer and their employees have coverage they need to be healthy and fulfilled. She feels her new role at HGI is the culmination of her diverse insurance experience and she is eager to share her knowledge. Alyssa holds a BA in Reconciliation Studies and Meditation from Bethel University. She has volunteered extensively with kids around the world through packaging food for children in third world countries and traveling to Haiti to build playgrounds for underprivileged children. She also enjoys playing volleyball, boating on Lake Geneva, and traveling to discover new adventures, whether they are local or abroad. We are happy and thankful that Alyssa can be with us here today to share her knowledge on this dynamic and engaging topic. Welcome, Alyssa. Thank you, Cassie, um, and thank you all who joined in today. I know schedules can get crazy and we're all busy, but we're gonna cover a lot of great content today and I'm excited to share. So for the next 50-ish minutes, we're gonna learn more about employee benefits and how to make your life easier as an HR professional. And if that doesn't wake you up, I don't know what will. Um, a little bit about me and how I got to be so lucky to become a benefits consultant. Um, when I was little, I actually, um, I started off having a professional passion to be a nursing major. Um, when I was little, I would carry around a stethoscope and have, you know, plastic band-aids and I'd go help people. And I knew 100% that I wanted to be a nurse. Um, I carried that professional passion through high school. Um, I had an internship and actually earned a scholarship to a four-year nursing program um, and, you know, carried that out at Bethel University. I was a nursing major along with, uh, you know, biochemistry TA. I really dove into the culture. And my very first day of senior year, it was time for me to do my clinicals. And so, you know, I, I had my nursing scrubs and my stethoscope, and I was walking into the hospital, all excited to become a nurse. And within the first hour, um, my professor and doctor had to pick me up off the floor because I had passed out. Um, and my ego was a little bruised, and I just kind of brushed it off as first day jitters of, you know, of my clinicals. And I walked in the next day thinking, oh, that'll be a funny story in a couple of years. Um, and within 30 minutes of that day, uh, someone was picking me up off the floor. I just couldn't hold my stomach, and it looked like nursing was going to be a challenge for me. So this went on for about two weeks, and I got a call from my academic advisor um, suggesting that I change my major. And um, my whole world was rocked because I just invested the last three years of my education into becoming a nurse. So I was kind of between a rock and a hard place. I didn't really know what to do. I ended up graduating with reconciliation and mediation and counseling um, in 2008. And of those of you that can remember, 2008 was a pretty tough time to enter the workforce. Um, 
but I decided, you know, I'm going to go for it. I couldn't find a job, so I was stuck between a rock and a hard place. I'm either going to move in with my parents, which was an awful thing to think about, or take an entry-level position, what I can get, and see where my career takes me. And just so happened, that entry-level position was in an insurance office. Um, and 10 years later, here I am, still in insurance and excited to be here. Um, but more importantly, why am I speaking to you? Um, it really all comes down to why I chose to work at Hausman Johnson Insurance. Um, some of you may know Hausman Johnson Insurance merged with the Benefit Service Group, and we, um, as the employees, got to create a why statement, which is much like a mission statement. Um, our why statement is something that I strive for every single day um, and really try to achieve. Um, and the statement is to support and care for those we serve so that we can reach, so they can reach their highest potential. So being a benefits consultant enables me to reach countless of employees and families to help them with their health care needs, which has been my personal why statement all along. So it may sound corny or tacky, but I get excited to help people navigate the health care system or speak at a SHRM conference, or consult employers with their benefits, because I think it's what I'm really meant to do. Um, and I guess we'll see that in about 45 minutes if you feel the same way. Uh, so I promise we won't be stuck on this webinar for the next six hours, and I really appreciate your time and initiative to learn more today. Um, let's make the most of it. So how many of you in your daily life get complaints from your employees about healthcare costs. Do you hear words like, my healthcare is too expensive, or why does the trend keep going up, or insurance is confusing, or even as the slide says, healthcare can be a tapeworm to our economy, which is so sad because we're in such an exciting time in our healthcare. You know, we're curing diseases, we are creating life-saving medications, for me specifically, in my healthcare goal is passing McDonald's on the way home from the gym, but we all have our own initiative. Um, this graph is a great example of why those negative thoughts about healthcare exist. As you can see, in the last 20 years, employee contributions and premiums have skyrocketed while earnings and inflation are at a slow climb. I'm sure you can think about how these numbers have affected you and your employees. So what I'm going to try and facilitate today are strategies and best practices to deal with a hostile healthcare environment. What can we do as HR professionals or consumers of our healthcare to not only make our lives easier, but save time and money as well? How can we retain the top talented personnel on our team and recruit the best out there? And most importantly, how do we know where to go and what strategies to follow and who to trust to get us through all of this healthcare information? All right, so when you think of your employee benefits and your job as the gatekeeper of employee benefits, do you have any frustrations or questions that come to mind off the top of your head? Maybe you're an HR department of one and need some help. Maybe you're swamped with employee questions and you don't have time to finish all of your job duties or other duties as assigned. In this section of the presentation, we'll go over how to use technology to leverage your employee benefits and make your life a little less stressful. Now, I'll be the first to admit that yes, I am considered a millennial. I know we're the worst. That being said, at least most millennials are somewhat tech savvy, right? Well, unfortunately, the tech, apt the tech aptitude part of being millennial completely skipped me. I'm awful. But even I can jump on board with these tech tools. So we live in an awesome time where if you have a question or don't know something, it takes less than a minute to type it out on Google and have millions of answers instantly. Well, I don't know about you, but I don't want a million answers to my question. I just want the right one, and I want it quickly. 
what if all the questions you have that are HR employee benefit related could be answered in one place? Well, here it is. They can all be answered with a tool called HR 360. So as you can see on the right-hand side of your screen, the HR 360 capabilities range from compliance to posters to frequently asked questions. Um, a lot of employers that we work with use this tool for compliance. Um, you know, that's a very hot topic right now. There are a lot of employers that are getting letters from the IRS stating that they're not compliant in one facet or another, and HR 360 allows you to print out all the documents that you need to be handing your employees in order to stay compliant. So it's a great tool to have access to. Um, also, you know, if you don't have time to come up with interview questions or job descriptions, this tool can create that for you based on your demographics and your zip code and what other people are using. Um, another great reason people use this tool is also for the employee handbook building. Um, you know, as you know, um, as an HR professional, your employer has to have an employee handbook and the guidelines in there, and HR 360 really helps freshen that up annually to ensure that you're compliant and your employees have a resource to go to. And it also has resources, things easy, easy as posters to put in your break room, about wellness initiatives or smoking cessation programs or any kind of benefit information that you want to get out um, to your employees. So it's really a great tool to have and it saves you a lot of time and effort in creating all of these things. So this is a sample screenshot of what the HR 360 homepage looks like. As you can see, everything from training videos, healthcare reform, discipline and termination, you name it, and it's all here. So I hear from a lot of employers that they absolutely dread their annual renewal. Can you relate? I hear things like it's time consuming, there's so many new rules and regulations on affordability for their employee benefits, and it's impossible to balance the benefits budget with the best interest for your employees. Dynamis is an electronic marketing tool that gives you more control and helps you understand all of the benefit plan options in real time with a click of a mouse. Dynamis gives you a visual presentation of your employee benefits. Now, I'm sure you're thinking, well, yeah, I get a spreadsheet with all my plan information on it from my broker. But have you seen those spreadsheets? Seriously. Even I have to get my readers out to see those numbers and columns, and I have 20-20 vision. They're always so confusing and so bulky, and they get out of order, and they're, I can't keep them straight. So what makes Dynamis different is that it eliminates the constant back and forth with your broker when making plan changes. This is a real-time tool that can adjust premiums, contributions, plan design instantly in one appointment. So you don't have to have your broker coming in and out of your office and eating up valuable time. No more confusing, confusing and bulky tiny print spreadsheets either. Another great function of Dynamis is that it can, be take, it can take an employer's budget for employee benefits and back into a benefit plan. It can, with a click of a mouse, it can model the impact of different plan designs or funding vehicles like HRA, HSA and FSA to see the impact and savings it could have and how it directly affects your employees' contributions and their premiums, saving you time and money to see the total plan picture. So networking with our HR peers is one of the most valuable resources that we have, whether it's through small groups, um, our SHRM meetings or conferences, et cetera. Unfortunately, we don't have small groups or SHRM meetings every day. So that's where our technology comes into play. With MyWave Portal and HR Connect, there are hundreds of real-time conversations and threads you can participate in, from benefits, FMLA, ACA, et cetera. You can also seek advice from subject matter experts at the click of a mouse. 
This tool has intranet capabilities where you can create a customized employer portal for your employees. This portal can house info on your benefits, company policies, surveys, calendars, wellness initiatives, and more. As you can see, this is a screenshot of the MyWave HR Resource Center. Everything from Affordable Care Act compliance, discussions, documents to put on your intranet written by subject matter experts, um, and updates on benefit legislation. So when you can't attend those SHRM meetings or um, you don't have someone to turn to, maybe you're an HR, um, HR office of one, this is a great resource to go to if you have questions, um, bounce ideas off of other HR professionals, um, and also have access to subject matter experts um, on compliance, and legislation questions as well. So I know we're talking about benefit technology, but a lot of these tools have ways to connect with your peers to ask questions, get advice, bounce ideas off each other, and reach out to for support. Networking and peer connections is key to being the best at your job. I personally challenge you to reach out to that peer that you met at SHRM last month that you kind of said hi to or brushed past. Or at the next meeting, go talk to someone you don't know. Who knows, they may just have the answer you've been looking for. Let's save each other time and reinforce accountability and bring out creativity and maybe even make a friend. Um, on a quick side note, personal story, when I first started in insurance, I actually had no idea what I was doing. I didn't even know how to sign up for my own insurance, to be honest. But in training, I met a peer who was going through the same thing. We connected those couple of days in training, and when she went back to Ohio, and I went back to my office in Colorado at the time, we stayed connected. We bounced ideas off each other, we helped each other with questions, and we learned together. So even if you're an HR department of one, there are peers out there that wanna help you. And actually, my training peer and I became very great friends and she's going to be a bridesmaid in my wedding this year. So really, we are our own greatest assets. So I'm gonna show you a short video clip because I think it's a great analogy of what it would look like to be in HR alone versus in HR working together with each other. So as you can see, if we collaborate and bring our expertise to the table, we can tackle that anteater or the seagull or the killer whale that represents our healthcare and employee benefits. And again, I challenge you to reach out to your peers, ask questions, get connected, create a little community for yourself um, because we are our greatest asset. Uh, to switch gears a little bit, the next technology we're gonna talk about is webinars. Um, and webinars seem like a very basic technology that have been around for a long time. Maybe they even trigger a big, flashing, boring sign in our minds. Hopefully that's not the case today, but um, that being said, as HR professionals, you have to be experts on a huge variety of information. 
save yourself the time and the energy and hours of research and register for a free webinar. You can choose a subject that you've been wanting to learn more about or maybe you need to know and you can register in a second. We all have crazy busy schedules, but more often than not, webinars are recorded and can be emailed to you. That way you can listen when you have time or a pause in your day or over your lunch hour. Um, I actually try to register for at least one webinar a week. It may not get, I may not get through them all, and I actually have a list of webinars saved on my desktop, but I use them for references when I need to learn more about a subject that I'm not an expert in. Um, so they can be really handy and useful in your everyday work life. All right, so the last benefit technology that we're gonna touch on um, is benefit decision support tools. So how many of you get swamped with questions about your open enrollment or your benefit offerings or the plan design, deadlines, et cetera? Employees end up missing the meeting or they don't understand or they get confused. Um, they hand you the packet and just don't know what to do. That's where a benefit decision support tool can be an off can be the answer literally to all their questions. Alex is a tool that guides employees through important benefit, network, wellness, and enrollment decisions. Taking a deep dive on an employee by employee basis to find the right plan that fits, fits each employee and their family's needs. I like to use Alex also because it's really engaging and keeps employees entertained while learning about their benefits. And we just have a short clip um, that highlights some of the unique assets of Alex. So take a look. Hi, I'm Alex. Gary, how often do you want to cover with your benefits later on? I'm going to ask you to give me an estimate for the number of times you might need different medical care. Aha! Uh -huh. This plan looks like it might be the one. You know how the whole in network, out of network thing works? Let me give you a refresher. So let's say here are the doctors and hospitals in your area. Now, for a particular plan, we'll pay less when you go see certain providers. Anyone in that group is in network. Everyone else is out of network. So I don't know if I would say selecting your benefits is actually a fun exercise, but it can definitely make it less painful um, when you can be entertained by a cartoon and they explain in depth the things that you don't understand. Um, and it really helps your job out a lot too to feel the less of those questions. So another great effective benefit decision support tool is Powtoon. Um, and I'm sure there are multiple variations of Powtoons with cartoons that explain benefits. Um, and as I've discovered, you'll get a much better enrollment outcome and experience when employees have access to a two to three minute video of a nerdy insurance guide to explain your benefit plan. When employees are handed a packet with insurance information that has dollar signs, percentages, and foreign words like premium, deductible, coinsurance, it can be very confusing and intimidating to navigate. If they have a resource um, available, like a cartoon character that's relatable, that's accessible 24 seven, so that they can rewatch it with their spouse or significant other on their time, I found that engagement and proper use of the benefits go up and costs go down. Um, and actually a quick side note, the first time I ever um, enrolled in employee benefits on my own, I was 
very confused. I thought insurance lingo was very intimidating, and I had no idea what I was doing. Um, but my first employer actually did have something like Powtoons with a cartoon, and it really broke down, um, you know, what a coinsurance was, what a premium is, and what that means for my paycheck. And it helped me decide how to correctly use my benefits. Um, and I was able to help educate other people on that as well. So I have a personal, I'm personally partial to using these tools for an, an enrollment technique, um, especially if you have multiple locations, this helps reach all of your employees um, on a deeper level. So I know it can take a while to adapt to a new technology. Like I said, I'm the first to admit that technology has never been my forte but it's here to stay and progressing more and more all the time. As we've discussed, jumping on board can save you a lot of time, a lot of stress, and can be a great resource and save your employer a lot of money. All right, so we're transitioning onto the second part of the presentation um, into hot trending benefits. So take a minute to think about the benefits your company's offering. Would you change or add anything? Are there benefits that you think could help attract and retain employees? So the fact is, the hottest employee benefit for the last two years in a row has been student loan repayment. It reaches the masses right now, right? Everyone has dealt with student loans in one way or another, or at least know someone who has. Much of today's workforce is faced with student loan debt and employers can help pay off their debt with a new innovative benefit called student loan repayment. As you can see, almost three out of four students carry student loan debt into the workforce, averaging $37,000. So I don't know about you, but if I had a student loan debt of $37,000 on my first day of work, I think I would be a little distracted and it would be really hard for me to focus on my job priorities. So, Benefit Ed is a unique product offering for your employees in the fact that it's not actually an insurance product at all. It can be classed out to employees. The employer can choose when, if at all, any payments are made and in the amount. And it also actually pays down the principal of the loan. Benefit Ed hits every demographic of the workforce as well, not just student loan burdened employees. This benefit can also serve as a 529 savings account to save money for future college students. So to attract younger employees with debt carrying into the workforce and older employees or more seasoned employees that have children and grandchildren getting ready to head to college. This benefit can be offered as employer-sponsored benefit where the employer contributes to the employee's student loan payment or 529 savings account on, an, on any schedule the employer chooses. Benefit Ed processes the payment on the employer's behalf and provides specific reporting back to the employer. This benefit is minimal work for HR because Benefit Ed works directly with employees and their specific loan provider through an email. Benefit Ed can be even less work when offered as a voluntary benefit. Um, it can use direct deposit from employee's paycheck to pay down the principal of the loan or to put into a 529 savings account. Um, benefit Ed highlights so many benefits, but I think the biggest is addressing employee's financial burdens and concerns with little to no added work or cost for you and your employer. All right, so we're gonna do it. We're gonna talk about pet insurance. Cause let's face it, our pets are expensive. A lot of people think pet insurance is silly. I did too at first, but think about your employees who don't have kids and may not be married. A lot of the time, employees without families on their benefit plan feel underrepresented with their employer. So this is a very easy way to offer a flashy, trending benefit with no cost and no additional work for your HR team. So facts, 
Almost 80% of households in America have a cat or a dog. I'd like to say that I'm more of a dog person, but I can't really because I don't actually have one. Um, I never ever thought that I would be a single woman in my 30s with a cat, but as fate would have it, here I am. <laughs> this is actually my cat Briggs. Um, again, never been a cat person, but she apparently had other plans when she was left behind as the runt of her litter on the side of the road. I had just moved to Kansas City and found her freezing and alone. So I thought I'd do my good cat deed for my life and take her to the shelter. Well, the, the shelter said she was too young and too small. They didn't have the resources to take care of her. Um, ironically enough, they boxed everything up that I needed to take care of her and said, that I would take care of her until she was adopted. So I agreed, and they promised to put her picture up on the website and someone would surely take her. Well, it's been five years and I still have a cat. So, um, but seriously, I know that there are a lot of naysayers when it comes to pet insurance. Personally, I think it comes down to if a medical emergency occurred, would you be able, or would you be in the right state of mind in that moment to put a dollar amount on your pet's life. Shockingly enough, I have a perfect example. Um, as many of you know, cats love Christmas trees. If you don't know, check it out on YouTube. It's totally worth it. Um, well, my cat Briggs loves the Christmas tree, and from what I can tell, she tries to conquer it every single year. Last year, I got home from work to find the tree in disarray, which is pretty normal, but I noticed there were pieces of light bulbs missing, and there was Briggs lying in the middle of the floor, not moving. Luckily, the emergency vet is only a block away, so I could rush her over. And as you can imagine, I was a mess. But when I got there, all I had to do was pay my deductible and know that that would do everything he could to ensure that she was okay. If I didn't have pet insurance, I know the dreaded question would have come, what is the monetary limit for Briggs and how far can we proceed? In the panic state of mind, I don't know how I could have answered that. So Briggs the cat is fine, by the way, <laughs> and she stayed away from the Christmas tree this year, um, which I was grateful for, but it's just a great peace of mind to know that she's taken care of and all that I have is a deductible and she's fine. Um, I like to promote the pet insurance FIGO because it is no cost or work for employers to offer it. FIGO has great savings and all the same benefits as other pet insurance products offer. The price for employees is based off of the breed and age of their pet and has a premium just like our health insurance. The unique thing about FIGO is employers can set up a portal specifically for their employees to use. Employees can log into this portal and automatically save 10% on their premiums. If they choose to pay annually, they can save up to 15%. I don't know about you, but 15% off premiums adds up pretty quick and is a huge saving. So when it comes down to it, pet insurance is a benefit you can offer at no extra cost and no extra work for you and your HR team. But it has a significant influence for your employees who have pets and feel like they're a part of their family. All right, so the last hot trending benefit that we're gonna discuss is um, online doctors. So think about your medical benefits currently. Do you have access to an online doctor? Staff say that 96% of employers' health plans offer an online doctor program with their benefits, yet not many are taking advantage of this. There are many reasons online doctors are becoming the new go-to. It limits time employees are away from work. It saves employers money with claims and also absenteeism. An example of this is a large company we work with here in Madison has access to online doctors. We calculated that this employer group could save $186 for each visit to their primary care physician for simple ailments if they would use an online doctor. 
Maybe the more surprising number is this employer could save $2,656 per emergency room visit if they would have called an online doctor first. Now, obviously, go to the emergency room if you lose an appendage or in serious need of medical attention. But there are times when the emergency room is not necessary and there's a doctor only a few minutes away online. Another example is a smaller group we work with had 18 visits to the doctor in one quarter that cost the employer $6,000. All of these visits could have been qualified and addressed through their online doctor program and would have only cost the group $600. That's $5,400 the group could have been saved or used to purchase a disability or life policy for all of their employees. As you can see, online doctors cover a wide variety of health conditions, and these are just a few. They even cover specialty services. Most online doctor programs only charge what the primary care physician copay is for that specific medical plan. If your plan doesn't have a copay, there is usually a flat fee of between $35 and $49, which is still much less than going into the doctor. I have actually used our, line, our online doctor a few times. I actually get strep throat every single year without fail. And all I had to do was download an app on my phone, use the FaceTime function, that any smartphone with a camera will work, or a laptop with a camera. And I just showed the doctor how swollen my throat was. He looked at my chart online and knew it was strep throat. I had a prescription waiting for me at my pharmacy in 30 minutes. I paid my, my PCP copay and my prescription copay a total of $30. Very easy and convenient when you're sick and don't want to go out around other sick people as well. So I don't know when this cartoon was made, but it's not that far off. People are using more online doctors daily and it's saving their employers a lot of money. All right. So we're in the home stretch. Um, in the last section, we're going to go over purchasing benefits wisely and efficiently. So take a minute and think of how your employer purchases benefits. Um, do you go through a broker? Do you go direct? Are you part of an association? Um, and we actually have an online poll on the side of your screen right now um, that you can click on. It's totally anonymous. Just vote on how your employer purchases benefits. Awesome, we'll just take a minute. So the fact that stands out to me the most on this slide is that the largest outsourced HR service is benefit consulting. So that kind of reflects exactly what um, the poll found in our webinar here is that you all have so much on your plates at work and all of the other duties as assigned that on average, 94% of employers are trusting a specialist, like a benefits consultant, to help guide them through the hostile healthcare environment. So how do you know who to choose? The 87% of you, how are you choosing your broker? So there are a few key considerations to keep in mind. Um, hopefully, you're not working with this lady. Uh, as, as Cassie mentioned in the introduction, I worked on the carrier side of insurance for many years before coming a becoming a benefits consultant and vividly remember how frustrating it can be to work with a broker that doesn't know or care about your benefits. Think about it. Employee benefits are the second most important deciding factor for key employees to stay or leave your company. Also, employers are investing a large percentage of their budget to offer employee benefits. Are you working with a consultant that is there with you to strategize, analyze, consult, communicate, service, and keep your group compliant throughout the year? Working with a consultant that believes in your organization's mission and development of your plan is vital to the success of your employee benefits. So 
So you need to be working with a consultant that shares your vision and has a vested interest and is bringing you new ideas all the time. Steer clear of the show up once a year brokers who hand over spreadsheets and give you short deadlines to make decisions. You need to demand more from your consultant because that's their job. Find a forward thinking consultant and leave the broker who's clinging to the past behind. I believe a word that needs to be associated with your benefits consultant is accountability. Be careful though, accountability is a buzzword these days and it's thrown around a lot. It's kind of like when someone asks you, oh, how are you doing today? You automatically reply, oh, I'm good. But why do we say that? I know I'm not always good. Um, the same mentality can be applied to our business partners. In reality, not all of our business partners are accountable, just like we're not always feeling good like we say we are. I believe the basic definition of accountability is to do what you say you're going to do. It is a very serious responsibility to consult on an employer's benefits and in order to be accountable and do what a consultant says they're going to do, there's a lot of hard work, communication that needs to be happening all year round. Make sure your consultant is following through with promises that were made to your employer, everything from reviews of your plan, newsletters, legislative updates, ACA compliance checks, and more. Is your consultant doing what they say they'll do? Because that is their job. Something that I find very valuable is to take a bigger, look, a bigger look at the whole picture of an employer's benefits. HC Metrics is a tool that allows your consultant to do that. Essentially, HC Metrics is an actuarial tool and model that allows us to benchmark an employer's plan against similar plans, evaluate cost drivers, Identify areas of potential cost containment. HD Metrics provides an analysis of macro cost drivers, which make up the environment around your health plan. So there are 11 different cost drivers or indices that we analyze. Industry, geography, demographics, plan design, plan operations, employee contribution, plan turnover percentage, level of participation, wellness initiatives, workplace policies, and disease management. These are all considered the environment that, that's around your health plan that can drive cost. All of these risk factors shape and influence an employer's health plan without being directly related to claims, which is the most important to note. Even if you are a smaller employer and don't receive claims data, you can still use this tool to see what's driving costs in your health plan. HD Metrics uses a database instead of tables, which produces more accurate results when modeling deductibles, coinsurance, out-of-pocket maximums, and co-pays. HD Metrics strategizes and takes a deeper dive into your health plan. And it's strategies like these and deeper thinking is what's going to set your consultant apart from your average everyday broker. So I think the most important thing to take into consideration when deciding who to work with for your employee benefits is trust. Again, I can't stress enough how important of a responsibility it is to be consulting on an employer's employee benefits. And it all comes down to people working with people. You wouldn't hang out with friends you don't trust. You wouldn't date or marry someone you don't trust. So why in the world would you choose to do business with someone you're not sure if you trust? So take a look at this video about trust and we'll kind of dissect it. Okay, then Lauren's gonna catch you. Okay, it's called the trust ball. Okay, trust ball, ready, set, go. Ouch, so that looks pretty painful. Um, but in this example, the girl with her eyes closed does have clear instruction on what she's supposed to do, but has no direction in what way to fall. 
much like in an employer and consultant relationship, you know your consultant is there, they give you instruction on your employee benefits, but the key factor is, do they tell you in what direction you're going? Do you have a strategy in place for what's coming in the next year or the next three years? Do you actually know what direction your employee benefits are going at all? So in conclusion, let's bring everything we talked about together into a big picture. So first, for leveraging benefits technology, don't be a stubborn technology challenge millennial like I was. Jump on the benefit technology bandwagon. It may take a little getting used to, but the trainings and resources available will make your job easier, you'll be more efficient, and can save your employer money. For hot benefit trends for a reason, employee benefit trends are quickly becoming the number one decision maker for key talent. Use that hot trending benefits we talked about that don't cause you more work or your team, but look trendy and enticing to attract and retain employees. They are relevant and useful without costing you a dime. And finally, for purchasing benefits, expect the very most out of your benefits consultant. It is an incredible responsibility to consult and advise your employer's healthcare utilization. Work with someone that is accountable, that's going to do what they say they're going to do, and is actually going to be there to guide you in the right direction. So, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I think we have time for a couple questions. Yes, we do. So, if you have any questions that you thought of during the presentation, please type them into the question feature of GoToWebinar and we will address them. Looks like we have our first question. If you had to pick just one piece of benefits technology to use, which one would you pick? That's a great question. Um, actually, from experience from just a group this year that I was working with, the benefit decision support tool called Alex was really helpful for open enrollment. Um, if I worked with a group that had about 27 different locations, and we weren't able to do one big group meeting to explain the benefits. So it was really helpful to send that link out and employees could, could click through and personalize their health insurance um, based on their specific needs and their family's needs. Um, and enrollment was actually up about 47% or engagement and their claims are actually down so far um, in last quarter and this quarter. So it was really helpful for them to actually understand and dissect the benefits. Um, and that's, that's the best tool, I think, for open enrollment. As far as um, support tool for you and doing your job as an HR, um, HR professional, HR 360 is really the one-stop shop for all of your HR questions and compliance needs, um, as well as using tools to help you in your everyday job, whether that's you know running total compensation statements for your employees or run, running through your employee handbook. It's just a really useful tool that all of the groups um, that we work with uh, really enjoy access to. Very good answer. Here's the next question. If we only have one plan, is Alex worth it? That is a great question. Um, you know, Alex is designed to work with groups that have one plan or have six plans. Uh, the group actually that I worked with this year also only had one plan. Um, they decided to implement an FSA, so that was helpful to get that education out to all of their employees. Um, but it is really helpful even if you only have one plan, because you know you have employees that have questions about what coinsurance is, or how their deductible works, or what a network is, what doctors can they go to. You know, remember back when you were a first time consumer of your health insurance, how intimidating and confusing that can be? Um, this tool really helps dissect it on a personal level um, for employees that need a little extra help. And if you're an expert, like you guys, you can click through um, and actually put your budget in and allocate 
the budget that you have towards your benefits to see if, you know, dental or vision or voluntary life insurance is um, also, you know, on the table for you and your family. All right, and our next question is, how do I get access to these tools that we talked about, such as Alex, HR 360, MyWave Portal, and HR Connect? That is a great question. Um, and actually, your broker should have access to all of these tools. Um, and most of them are free of cost. So that's the great thing about this. Alex does have some charges that are associated with, depending on how many employees you have. Um, but your broker or your cur current consultant should be able to walk through that with you. Um, I know in our case, HR 360, MyWave Portal, and HR Connect are all included. Um, all of our groups have access to that. So definitely have a chat with your current broker and see um, if they have these resources available for you. It looks like we have a follow-up to that. How much do these tools cost? Um, yeah, just like I said, Alex is um, charged on a per member per, per year basis. So every member that utilizes this, there is a small admin fee. Um, but, you know, your broker could have access to discounts or a relationship with the actual Alex um, company. So it really just depends and it varies on how you use Alex um, and how many discounts that are available to, through your broker. All right. Now it looks like we have an insurance question. Can I implement pet insurance off renewal? Um, also a great question. You can implement pet insurance off renewal because all you're doing is setting up an employer portal for your employees to sign up. And as soon as they sign up, they receive that discount. So if you wanted to do it, um, you know, next month, the first of the month, you can do it in the middle of the month. It really doesn't matter. Um, it's just an additional benefit that you can add on. And, um, you know, I really feel like employees value this benefit, even though it sounds kind of silly. Um, but a lot of people will take advantage of it. We've seen a huge uptick in pet insurance in the last year. All right, and our next one. If you don't have claims data, how can you do predictive modeling? That's a great question. So when we talked about HC metrics, we talked about predictive modeling and how if you don't have claims data, you could still use this tool. Um, HC Metrics uses external data sources, um, such as OptumSite as a comprehensive pricing model. We take aggregate survey data, including Mercer Towers Watson, Kaiser, um, MRA, Price Waterhouse Coopers, um, and medical expenditure panel surveys. So a lot of big companies, and we aggregate this data, um, and we also have an aggregated book of business data that we use to compare different companies that are the same size as yours, have the same amount of employees, and are in the same relative zip code. And that's kind of how we get our predictive modeling and how we assess your plan design. All right. It looks like we may be out of questions. Just enter your question if you are still just kind of thinking about asking it. We have a little bit of time for maybe one more. All right, uh, do employees pay the premium for pet insurance through the portal or do they have to do a payroll deduct and then they pay the company? That's a great question. Um, as soon as you set up that employer portal, employees create their own login and pay their premiums on their own. So really what the benefit is of setting it up as an employer group is that you can offer the discount, the 10% discount to all of your employees as they log in through that portal. So that's the great thing about pet insurance. It literally does not cause you any more work after the portal set up. It takes about five minutes to set up um, and your broker should be able to help you with that. Um, your employee logs in and they can make their payments on their own. It has nothing to do with your company. Um, they just get the discount associated with your company. All right, well, thank you so much, all of you, for attending today's webinar.
I'm going to go to the slide now for the credits if you need them. As a reminder, please fill out the short survey sent to you as your feedback is super important to us. We hope you can join us for our next webinar, which is on February 21st and is titled Effective Financial Management of Workers' Compensation Costs. It's sure to be a great webinar and we hope to see you there. You can sign up for our upcoming webinars on the Hausman Johnson website. Thank you guys so much for attending and have a great rest of your morning.